Let us pray. O oh God, the fountain of wisdom, whose will is good and gracious and whose law is truth, be with us as we gather this evening for the Gloucester Township Council meeting. We pray this night for all those throughout our country who are impacted by inclement weather, for those in California in, and Oregon experiencing drought, and for those in Oklahoma and Texas who are experiencing flooding. We also pray this night for all those who are impacted by Tourette's syndrome, praying for those who have Tourette's and for the family and friends who serve as advocates for them. Bless David, our mayor, and grant him wisdom and grace in the exercise of his duties. We beseech you so to guide and bless our council members that their actions and decisions this night will please you and be to your glory and honor. Give them courage, wisdom, and foresight to provide for the needs of the community. Be with all those who serve the greater good in the public service of police, fire, and emergency workers. Keep them safe when they are called into dangerous situations. Teach our people to rely on your strength and to accept their responsibilities to their fellow citizens, that they may elect trustworthy leaders and make wise decisions for the well-being of our society that we may serve you faithfully in our generation and honor your holy name. For yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all others. Amen. This regular meeting of the Township Council is being held in accordance with the scheduled meetings of the Township Council. Established and adopted by the Township Council was scheduled designated time, date, and place of this meeting. Adequate public notice of this meeting has been provided pursuant to the provisions of the Open Public Meetings Act. We are using electronic amplifying recording device in order to obtain an audible and clear record. We request all those who wish to speak be recognized to state your name and address directly into the microphone. Recording device to be solely utilized by a Township Clerk's Office shall be the official record of the Township Council meetings. Roll call, please. Hutchinson? Present. Mr. Schmidt? Present. Mr. Sila? Here. Mrs. Strata? Here. Mrs. Mercado? Present. Mr. Bianchini? Present. Mr. Lechner? Here. Mr. Carlinger? Here. Mr. Parks? Here. Right, I'm going to go out of order a little bit here. I'm going to go and read the proclamation. to read this proclamation. I would ask Jeremy if he would like to join me with his father or anyone else. Proclamation, whereas Tourette's syndrome is an inherited neurologic disorder that is characterized by involuntary physical and vocal tics that occur many times a day, and whereas Tourette's syndrome is often accompanied by other conditions such as attention deficit and obsessive compulsive disorder, learning disabilities and depression, and whereas the neurological disorder known as Tourette's syndrome affects 1 in 100 children, more than 20,000 school aged children in the state of New Jersey alone are dealing with Tourette's syndrome, and although some of these cases are aided by medication, there is no standard treatment or known cure for this order, disorder. Whereas there is an important need for more professional help with interest and expertise to identify, counsel, and treat people with Tourette's syndrome with the lag time between initial onset of symptoms and proper diagnosis for those who not seek help still 
averaging more than seven years. And whereas positive actions to assist those children and families dealing with Tourette syndrome will result from a broadening of public and professional knowledge and acceptance of Tourette syndrome, and whereas the New Jersey Center for Tourette Syndrome is the first and only program of its kind in the nation, and they are actively providing services to families, educating medical professionals, teachers, social workers, and supporting research to understand the signs and treatments of Tourette Syndrome. Now, therefore, I, David R. Mayer, Mayor of the Township of Gloucester, along with Glenn Bianchini, President of the Township, Gloucester Township Council, do hereby proclaim that Thursday, June 4th, 2015, will be recognized as Tourette Syndrome's Awareness Day in the Township of Gloucester, as a special day to promote understanding, compassion, and acceptance for all of our fellow citizens who deserve and need our support to break the stigma that is related to Tourette Syndrome. This is a very important um, disease that we go on notice, uh, or the only time it is noticed is when someone is in public and having uh, some issues with it. I can tell you with the healthcare background that I have and all the uh, temple, all the studies that we do, um, we probably don't do anything or, or very little for this one, and it's probably something that we should do. There's a lot of these diseases that we uh, push aside because they don't this one affects a lot of people, especially children, that we really need to uh, focus on. And so uh, I'm proud of you to stand here with you as we read this and uh, continue success. And hopefully we will have treatments. And it sounds like the state of New Jersey is doing uh, a lot of great things. So congratulations. Thank you for being here with me. Thank you, Dad. It's, imp it's impressive. So I appreciate that. All right. Council, Ray Paul Dura, Ariel. Right? Just a question on resolution uh, 1505164, uh, the interlocal service agreement with the uh, other municipal police departments. And um, basic layman's term, what type of service agreement are we getting into or agreement with them that looks like the money is going towards standard policing uh, when you read the resolution? What is extraordinary about this or different than what the police departments don't already do? Chief, would you want to explain this one? We, that's referred to as the JAG or Justice Assistance Grant. I think that we've received it probably for um, at least a 10 months, I need 10 years that I can remember. So, uh, for police equipment typically, uh, police radios on the pads, other equipment for vehicles. This year it'll be for protective equipment, ballistic helmets, ballistic pads, and uh, some protective shields for police officers. So, it's, it's for equipment. Chief, and in the past, Camden City was normally the lead agency and put together this grant for a municipality in the county. Correct, and that's still the case. Okay, I guess the, the, the question would be, and, and understanding it better with equipment is, is uh, sensible, but in previous times that we had done that, it would be, would this not be the first time we entered into an agreement with the City of Camden Police Department since they've been the countywide police, is that correct? I do not believe that is correct. Am I correct, Chief? No, I believe we've done it the other yes. time. It's actually handled by um, by Jill and puts it together, but I think it's required. <laughs> okay. okay, and to the best of our knowledge, uh, true or not true, when uh, even Gloucester Township Camden County residents pay their county taxes, is that not some of the responsible funding for the, ca the countywide police? Even here in Gloucester Township, are we not uh, providing revenues for that countywide police as part of Camden County? I, I, I would... Chief, correct me or Tom, correct me if I'm wrong. I believe the towns that are using that are the ones paying for that service from the county metro police. Am I correct on that? I believe so, but I'm not. I'm not certain. Can you? Can you? Since it's a question, uh, let's clear it up. And can you uh, ask that question of our county 
uh, freeholders and make sure uh, we have that answer correct. Because to the best of our knowledge, it's it's only Camden City, and I believe I, I don't know if Woodland or not is, but uh, I, don't I don't know. I don't know, Ray. Um, I know Woodland and Collingswood had a, an agreement to do it, but that split, and I thought Woodland got their own policing department, but I don't know. The because it, apparently the county is looking to expand the countywide police into two more municipalities and and farther, and if we're funding them already, uh, what kind of service agreements? agreements in general are we entering into for something that we're already paying for in the city of Camden with the countywide police? Well, my understanding Just a is this is uh, for a grant, and the lead agency, again, was Camden, as it has been in the past. And so this is for us to attain that funding and be able to get that equipment. Am I correct? That's correct. Yeah. Would not Gloucester Township be able to do that on our own without Camden? Uh, I don't know. Um, Chief, do uh, you know that answer? I don't, and I'm not so certain it's, it's Camden County Metro PD, it's actually the county of Camden. So I believe in, you know, some of you know, look better, but I think the agreement is with the county of Camden who administers the grant on behalf of Camden County. Because of my understanding, with Thanks. reading the resolution the best that I could in the short time that I had, the city of Camden and Terry Hill are, are inclusive, and as far as I understand it, that would be city of Camden's police department is countywide. It is the same government. So right. I mean, I'm not trying to be misleading, but I, I mean, you know, I, I think that we're actually having, I think the, the funds come through the federal government, I guess, through the state, and then ultimately down to the county government, who then disperses the funds out. That's my understanding of it. That's how it's worked in the past. I'm uh, just curious if Gloucester Township would be privy to do that on our own, provide for our police department, and uh, sharing with something that we're already paying for, if indeed we are. Thank you. Have a good night. Good evening, Mr. President and Council. Um, Robert Kolakowski, Lincoln Drive, Glen Oaks. A uh, bit of housekeeping. Did I miss it, or did you not do the commencement statement? I did. You did it? I did read okay, it. Okay, I did. Yes. I missed it. <laughs> okay. Um, secondly, uh, regarding the same um, inner local services, um, in the resolution printed, it says Camden City Police Department, I think last year, we had the same problem, it should be the county police, I think, since the city doesn't exist anymore. Yes, it's correct. The city still exists, but... but well, know. no, the police, the city police yeah. department doesn't exist. I think we had that problem last year. And I think this is the same um, type of grant last year. I think we got tasers with us, I think. Sounds correct. Right. Correct both, I, I think. Right. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Else. Yes. Joanne. <coughs> Joanne Carr, Timber Birch. Um, just continuing my education here. Concerning the uh, renewal of the liquor license, I looked on the board and it said it was for Benzie, which has <coughs> been closed. Does the license stay with the Location, or does it stay with the person who owned it? I'm sorry, that was, that was the liquor license. The sorry. liquor license. I'm sorry. It's in pocket. It stays with the person They're holding it. The owner of the license holds it. Okay, so it's not necessarily for that particular address anymore. It's for Correct. that person. Correct. Okay, thank you. Yep. Anyone else? Seeing no other hands, we we'll close the first public portion. Minutes? We the reading and accepting minutes of regular minutes May 11th, 2015, and special minutes May 18th. Motion to approve the minutes. Second. On the question, roll call, please. Murchison? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Seiler? Uh, I'll abstain from May 18th and vote yes for May 11th. Mrs. Strada? Yes. Mrs. Lenners? Yes, for May 11th. Yes. Mr. Bean Yes. Bids? Carpet replacement for the Gloucester Township Municipal Building, re roofing of the Gloucester Township Senior Community Center, and remote surveillance camera trailer. Motion to approve the, or accept the bids? Projecting. And it, it is later. 
Lincoln Drive, Glen Oaks. Um, first question, which which relates back to that first ordinance, uh, has the money that we're requesting uh, been earmarked for any specific equipment at this point, or are we waiting till we get it to to decide uh, what the needs are? Uh, for the JAG grant. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think the, the chief talked about the shields and helmets and uh, for that grant. Am I correct, the chief? That's correct. So it is designated for a certain type of equipment? Yes. Correct. Um, and secondly, I would like to um, thank and compliment the uh, Gloucester Township Police Department. The Chief and I have been having a discussion the past few months about the speeds on Lincoln Drive. Um, and the, the Police Department did put up signs, digital speed monitoring signs. And last week or the week before, um, they painted, the township painted the speed limit on the asphalt in the street at various parts of Lincoln Drive. Uh, and I just wanted to thank them for that. 
Um, I hope that it cuts down on at least some of the speeding. I don't think it, you know, it'll be a cure-all, but again, any little effort uh, is appreciated. Thanks again. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Chief. Jim? Yeah. Good evening. Jim Kibbles, this Ariel. Just a follow-up on Ordinance 1510. I missed it. Um, for those people or employees that you have that do not have a checking account or savings account, are you providing an account for them? I don't know the particulars of that part of it, Jim. I do know that the, um, that the temporary work people continue to get a check as, as normal, so there may be an exception for that. Yeah, because that's what happened at Temple, was there are some that do not have uh, any banking See, accounts. Seasonal and temporary will get checks just like that. Okay. Very we, good. Still have, we still retain that ability. Okay. What about the people that do? Do they have the option of, I mean, it's saying mandate, but could they have the option? No option. Okay, what about overtime pay? Would overtime pay be separate or included in the deposit? Uh, that would be okay. Uh, there is, I'll tell you on the sidebar why there's a separate one at Temple. Uh, today, um, I'm sure everybody knows this is, well, you know, one of the things that's been bugging me for years since I've been here, and it's Canadian geese. Uh, <laughs> I'm familiar with Canadian geese. Yes, it's been a problem. Today, just sort of like I blew my stack, uh, where there was a group of Canadian Greek geese going from Panera Bread across Berlin Cross Keys to the Wawa, and traffic stopped and just backed up. I know that on the facilities like um, our community parks, the schoolyards, the school uh, baseball fields and stuff, the geese graze and defecate. Anybody bringing up any you know, problems like the school system or something to council saying like can we do something about these geese? I mean they can't be protected anymore. I mean they multiply five goslings each, each time they mate. Yeah I know we have the fake dogs out there or the wooden dogs yeah, that don't do much. Um, I know uh, I've heard uh, organizations complain, but uh, nothing that I'm aware of that we've done other than those those items there. Yeah. In our development, we put a fence around our two retention ponds, and that has limited the amount of geese. We've gone from a rather large population down to about 10. But, uh, you know, it just seems like they're walking all across the streets, and, you know, people just, you know, stop and cause accidents. Kids are playing on the ball fields, soccer fields, and they're running through all this defecation. You know, it just, something's got to be done. And I'm just, today was the day that I decided to bring it to your attention again. No, I, I, I hear you, Jim, and I don't disagree that it, it uh, can be uh, difficult to deal with at times. Um, and I don't think the wooden uh, silhouettes of dogs uh, stop any of them. As a matter of fact, they're sitting right next to it. <laughs> but um, I, I hear That's you. It. Okay, thank you. Frank, what you say? We can be on the hunting one. Hey again, Council, Ray Paldor, Ariel. Uh, two follow-up questions. Uh, one was, uh, was a letter drafted uh, from Gloucester Township to the DEP regarding the uh, issues with Lake Renee. I received a communication from Okay, can you tell me when that letter is going to be drafted and I would like a copy of it as soon as it is drafted? Well, I have to send it to the uh, clerk's office and council. You have to secure that to do that. I can't send you the direct copy. You can secure it under over. Uh, but I will draft it. I just have to have the opportunity once I receive them. Mr. Campbell gave me the information pretty quick, but I have not had an opportunity to sign it. And I don't mean to really beat on you, but the last meeting was three weeks ago and nothing's moved forward. Here's my concern. Over the past weekend, I went out, my, out back in my yard and there's kids swimming in that nasty, nasty water. I can't make them leave and, I'm not, and they're little kids, 10, 11, 12, 13, and I'm certainly not going to call the police on them. But I did advise them to get a hose and shower that, get that water off and get a shower. The water's nasty. Also, next month, you're going to be visited by a lady named Rainey. 
She's a lady who was diagnosed with Legionnaire's disease at the lake. Her daughter's coming by. She's very, very passionate. Um, she's just sitting on pins and needles waiting for something to be brought back from the DEP. In all honesty, um, this young lady and her mother have had to deal with uh, uh, medical professionals telling her that she um, contracted Legionnaire's disease, and I'm going to quote her at ShopRite on the mist coming onto the vegetables and the fruits. That's a bit much to try and accept, because if that's the case, don't you think a lot more people would have concerns and Legionnaires? If you remember, Ray, the original Legionnaires outbreak was in a uh, hotel in Philadelphia, I'm sure you remember Philadelphia that. back then. Yeah, and uh, that came through, they identified that coming through the air conditioning system. Right, and, and we both are pretty well tuned in and it's, it's, it's an airborne thing and, and again that's one of the questions that I asked Mr. Cartermere last time with those that are utilizing the lake for irrigation purposes that's instant airborne uh, Legionella. Uh, the other uh, question is a follow-up I believe Mr. Cartis, uh, I my question to you was at the time where is the cutoff for public works over time when they're earning time and a half on Friday and when does time and a half become double time after how much time? And I think I provided that to you. The Friday and Saturday work would be a time and a half. The Sunday work would be a double time. Only Sunday's double time. That's it's right. not the amount of hours, it's the days of the week. Is that correct? I believe it's the days of the week. Okay, so no matter how long they work on Friday and then how long they work on Saturday, it is only a time and a half Sunday would become double time. Holidays are all Likewise, Sunday. holidays. Yeah. Understood. Okay. And uh, just a little, I guess, a uh, humoristic moment from Mr. Kibblestis about the geese uh, up at the Wawa. If you look up at Wawa's sign, there's a geese up above there. <laughs> and that is why they prefer You're right. the Sicklerville Wawa. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. Joanne? Car Timber Birch. I remember a few years ago they tried to take care of the geese problem by either spraying the nests or spraying the ground so that they did not kill the geese but the eggs didn't hatch. So you have a poor mama sitting there on those eggs and ain't nothing happening. <laughs> it's just, but it does cut down. I was at the bank today in Stratford and I was at the drive-in and there was a family there, a mother and a father and three goslings in the drive-thru. In the drive-thru. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, it's all concrete. And the lady two lanes over in the ATM, they decided to pick her lane. She's yelling and screaming, it's going all through the bank. Get out! <laughs> Eventually they left. But you might check with the state and see what they have for that. Just to just to cut down. I figured, hey, if they reproduce themselves, that's it keeps it the same. But if you go to five, that's a lot. So okay, um I saw the brand new playground equipment and I think it's great. But why what necessitated it? Was the other equipment faulty? I thought we'd only just gotten that. No, that, that equipment had been there beyond 10 years. No, that, that, that was installed after the old tire park. I think it was there many years. It was in bad shape. Tom, I've lived here so long, I remember all those parks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. that, those, that, those, that equipment has a lifespan. Yeah. Yeah. Usually it's covered, but once it gets past that, the liability becomes ours. Correct. And it was getting to the point where there were some dangerous situations. Okay, thanks. And another check. Have, have you checked with the mayor or anybody about those property tax credits? I did. I spoke with him. Uh, he, I did not participate in the meetings that he had, okay. but he had several meetings on, on that topic. Mm -hmm. And as it turns out, I mean, it's an expensive program to participate. It requires a, uh, a lot of effort on our part. Uh, he actually thought that you we, we would need a full-time person to actually do that kind of that kind of solicitation, and he did not think it was uh, cost-effective. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Hmm. Couldn't hire a uh, a senior intern, partially volunteer, to yeah, help with their. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> there's a possibility if it's going to help get my property taxes lowered. You know, you never know. I'm like, you have to think outside the box. We might take you up on it. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Pete Heinball, Morningstar Court, Circleville. Um, evening. Uh, first off, um, I attended the Memorial Day ceremony of the park on Monday. It was very well conducted, very well run. So it was it was nice being there for that. Um, one thing I wanted to mention: there was no bill list that's customarily provided on the website. That wasn't available. For this related to this. Uh, okay. You can make that. You can make that available. Yep. Thank you. Um, and a couple property tax related questions. First, the uh, proposed rehab facility that's, uh, in fact, there's a zoning board is coming up in the next zoning board meeting in June. Is that area across from the college there, is that a redevelopment zone of the township? No, it's not. So if, if that facility, it, well, let me ask this first. Because of the type of institution it is, <coughs> it doesn't make them tax exempt or anything like that. They, they would. Uh, I don't know. Uh, some health care institutions are, but is, uh, do you know anything on that? Uh, I would have to defer the tax assessor. Okay. It's a for-profit enterprise, right? It's so a for-profit, then I would imagine it's not. Yeah. yeah. And there's nothing that would make it less than the full rate. Like some of these commercial industrial rates, they don't pay a different rate than residential, do they? No, I don't I think, think the rate so. is uniform for everyone. Yeah. Right. Um, so if this facility wanted a tax abatement, it would have to go through the application. It could if it went through the application process and yeah, came up for a vote. Yeah, it's an application process okay. that is determined by, I guess, the local government's so work. Right. On the new construction. Right. right. Anything that's new, not the uh, existing uh, land, et cetera. This body has no opinion yet on the, what their feelings are of giving that facility a tax abatement. Do you have any for, for us? There's no, it's really premature to right. even talk about it. We don't even know if they're coming or if it's going there. Or anything, okay. so. Related to that, uh, the, the uh, outlets, have they submitted their application for the uh, tax abatement yet? Do you know that, Tom? I do not know that. We can ask the uh, truck, I guess we'll get that, right? There's a preliminary and then a second application, right? Is that how it? if they're required there might be a procedure once the first application and the assessor starts to go through the application and there's it's probably a process they go through the first application the second time okay so it's the process of the assessment okay. um, um we'll ask Trump. okay um, we'll ask Trump. thank you and just to uh refresh myself on the the five-year abatement the 0 20 40 60 80 abatement that's a uh that, that those percentages are on the full tax. Like they pay twenty percent, forty percent, sixty percent of the. I don't think it's that. I think it's. Uh, it's the improvements. Zero, thirty, fifty, seventy-nine. Okay. Okay. And it's, it's just on the improvements, improvements. right? Yeah. But I meant to ask: Is this on all the all the individual taxes? Is thirty percent, fifty percent on the county and the library and the, no, and the school we, tax, or is it? I mean, is it yeah, we collect, and the way the abatement works, all that money until it reaches the point where it's 100% and assessed is kept by the local municipality. Oh, so it's for, it's five, during that five year abatement period, that the school stays, stays with the schools do not receive it, the county does not receive it, the fire companies don't receive it. There's been much discussion of that. And this entity, would it, would, yeah. <laughs> This entity would only pay 30, 50, so on percent of the municipal tax rate. On the improvements only. But on the municipal tax rate of the. No, no, it's on the overall tax bill. What, it would, what, it would, what the bill would be. Wow. Okay. Schools, schools and fire, well, we know fire districts have voiced, there's been a voice against that, but schools or count, the county never, I guess the county's kind of on board with that, but the schools. It's a state mandated plan by state legislation. There, well, there's been negotiations 
Washington Township, for example, I think that was more on like a long-term pilot, but they negotiated something where they decided they, with the school district, where they, Washington Township decided they, under a pilot, not under yeah. Okay. Keep in mind there's a rollback on that property because it's farm farmland assessed. So as far as taxes, I think we're getting four or five thousand dollars a year on that property in taxes. So on the assessed property, just the land, I think it's assessed at ten million dollars. For the outlet. Yes, just yeah. for the land. Yeah, absolutely. So that we're so, all back because it was farming. Yeah, yep, yeah, correct. So schools, county, and every other entity receives a portion of that assessment on the land. The full after, rate. After five years. No, 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 no. No, that's not under the abatement. Oh, right, you're right. The land portion, the all, only all the, I gotcha. Okay, that's a good point. That's a good point, thank you. Um, I guess those are my questions for today. Thank you. Thank you, Pete. Anyone else? Seeing no other hands, we close the second public portion. Polling of directors and council, please. Mr. Lechner? I have nothing to report, thank you. Nothing to report. Thank you. Parliament? Nothing to report. Mr. Fardis? Nothing to report. Mr. Hutchison? Thank you very much for coming out this evening and participating. Mr. Schmidt? Thank you for coming out this evening. Thank you for your questions. Mr. Siler? Yes. We completed a new veteran monument in the community park on Hickstown Road, and we held a wreath laying ceremony there Memorial Day. The monument turned out to be beautiful. If you get a chance, stop by and take a look at it. We thank uh, the police department uh, for escorting the uh, people to the different monuments. There are nine <coughs> monuments that we lay wreaths on Memorial Day now, and they did an excellent job of controlling traffic. Thank you. Mrs. Turner? I just want to remind everybody, June 13th is coming up quickly. That's our annual relay for life for the American Cancer Society. We'll be out there uh, Saturday 8 a.m. till Sunday 8 a.m. And everyone is welcome to at least spend a little time with us and help us raise money for the American Cancer Society. And uh, I'm sure I'll let Michelle take the uh, next uh, announcement. Have a great week. Mrs. Um, I want to thank everybody for coming out. And if anybody has some time on Saturday, we will be hosting the sixth annual Field of Dreams Women's Street Hockey Tournament. Uh, it's at the Lakeland Hockey Complex. It's normally held in Egg Harbor, and the FC can Field of Dreams benefits from it. Uh, this year, they asked my daughter to host it, so we're hosting it at Lakeland. She's running it. Uh, it'll be from 10 to probably about, uh, I'm hoping they give us more time between games because we're going to need to kind of rest. Um, we're probably from like 10 to 12.30, maybe 1 o'clock or so. So if you want to come out and I'm sure you'll laugh. Um, don't hold it against me for any words that come out of my mouth. Um, but it's a great event. We're going to have the Chinese auction things, and the snack stand will be open, and, and you can come see Tracy and I out there with our helmets and sticks and running around making fools of ourselves. So please come, and you'll see Orlando in the snack stand if you're there early. I tried to get them to tell you about their yeah. what that noise is. Thank you for coming out this evening. Uh, I want to thank uh, the Veterans Affairs Committee and uh, Lieutenant Colonel Siler for their leadership on our Memorial Day service uh, and also for their leadership on the uh, new monument in uh, Gloucester Township Community Park. It sits up on the hill. It's a wonderful monument. It'll be dedicated in September, Sam. Is that correct? September 16th. September 16th. Also, invite everyone out to Gloucester Township Day on June 6th. It starts at 11 o'clock and once it's at 9 o'clock, includes the fireworks. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I'd like to thank all the residents for attending tonight's meeting. Um, <coughs> hope everybody had a great Memorial Day uh, start, the unofficial start of summer. There's a lot of activities going on throughout the township and the county, so I would uh, ask that uh, look at their website so you can see what's going on. Um, the Memorial Day uh, events, the uh, <coughs> nine monuments, especially the one in Community Park is just a wonderful program. The Veterans Committee uh, does a fabulous job. Um, other than last year, uh, I've been to all of them, and it's just been, 
it's just heartwarming. My father served in World War II, and uh, a lot of close friends of mine have uh, served our country and allow us to do what we do up here and allow you to ask questions and feel comfortable in challenging anybody in, in, in government to, uh, to perform uh, appropriately. And, and to me, that is because of people like our veterans who have fought for this uh, freedom. And so never take it for granted. I, I definitely do not. Uh, it's important that uh, I share this with my own children as my father shared it with me to get out and vote and to participate in your government. So um, Memorial Day does that for me every year. And Sam, thank you for always being there. Uh, it's a, that, that Veterans Memorial in the park, you need to go and see it. Uh, Los Angeles Public Works has done a fabulous job in creating that. It. It's just beautiful. So with that, uh, I ask for a motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Those against? Meeting adjourned.